Day one of Anthropy, very exciting, and we're both here. We're the bigger team this year, and about double the amount of people at Anthropy than last year, I think. There's a lot of anticipation, it feels like. I feel the pressure on Anthropy to do something has built, obviously because it was a success last year. And I think for me, the anticipation is partly the sense that somewhere out here is this huge, great storm, which is gonna come in and dump, so we're told, a huge amount of water in very short order. And here we are in a hole in the landscape, <laughs> so we'll see what, we'll see what they happens. Flooding. Did you hear we went swimming in the sea this morning? I saw the photograph. Yes. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. It was insane. And was anyone else from Anthropy there? Or did they have all read the small print in their contracts? <laughs> Saying and don't insurance know. policies and no, so on? Uh, no, it was just our team. Because we like a little bit of fresh water in the morning. I do, but it mainly comes through a tap. <laughs> but anyway, um, here we are. It's, it, it is happening again. I must say, it... it, it I came in later, I came in halfway through day one, and I just felt immediately swept in, in a way that I didn't quite feel last year. It seemed to have found its legs. Um, yeah. And I like that. I am Louise Keller at Roper. We did this panel. We moved from um, a room in here in the core building, which held 70, to, to the big auditorium. And but... it, fe it felt very energetic. So well, we, 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 ha we, we worked quite hard this morning on reshaping how we were going to run it yeah. in order to create that energy between people in the room and not have a big division between audience and panel. Yeah. So we had, just as a reminder to everybody, we had Liz Robinson from Big Education and Chris Pearson from the London Interdisciplinary School, brand new university. Did they know each other? No, no. Which, you know, that's could be over time the part of the magic of anthropology. Yeah, well, that's it. Was one thing I loved was to bring them together because they both work on expanding education yeah. in a way that normal schools and universities don't tend to, so to speak. So, so I really enjoyed it. It left me feeling slightly sort of overburdened with this sense that the existing educational system is, if not rotten, pretty. Um, skewed and problematic and there are these new approaches to learning and, and throughout lifetimes coming up but the question is is it is the change coming fast enough i don't know what your reading was i think the, the system is rotten but again it's like everywhere i look there are really good people yeah. doing really good things and so it's just bringing this together and accelerating that change yeah. I heard a rumour that a thread had started criticising Anthropy and Eden for being sort of white middle class people, yeah. self-congratulatory. And in some ways, I think that's slightly fair. Yeah. I mean, in, in, in one of the sessions, Jonathan Porritt was uh, talking today about, he said, basically, you're expecting me, him, to talk about sustainability. And I said, I'm going to talk about social destitution yes. and the way in which this country over 13, 14 years of, 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 of particular government's rule, it's actually coming apart at the seams. And, and that's not properly on the agenda. So, it, and, and it did inject a degree of discomfort into the room. But then the question is, how do you get the destitute into the conversation in a way that isn't formulaic and, and exploited yeah. to? Maybe the criticism you can see where it's going. At the same time, wh when I look around the, the people here, lots and lots of people are working on their own or in very small organizations. And I think it's okay to have three days of the year where you come together and you violently agree on quite a lot of things and create new connections and that you are uplifted and feel energized to do more. Group therapy, we well, call it. Well, it's a little bit like that. <laughs> What are you most looking forward to, apart from dinner in the rainforest? Well, I'm, I'm enjoying the serendipity factor of just bumping into people and, and, and having unexpected conversations. But I've got this session in the afternoon on security and defense and the armed forces. And I feel that's slightly like tossing a hand grenade into a goldfish pond because <laughs> I, don't, well, I don't think those sorts of issues have really been discussed here yet. But if we're thinking about Britain's role in the wider world, global Britain or whatever, then the role of uh, this country as a military power in the mm. world is crucial. And, and so I'm not just thinking that as one session, I'm thinking, can we start a conversation here that over a number of years could evolve in useful ways? Lots of people actually have come up to me today and said they're looking forward to that session. 
So and now you've got the big room as well. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to fill it somehow. And you, what are you looking forward to? Well, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm also moderating a session on um, SMEs for, yeah. uh, for the Bankers for Net Zero initiative. And there are just so many sessions. There are yeah. apparently 14 concurrent sessions at any point in time, right. which is, to the Anthropy team, slightly too much because we've got FOMO yeah. all the time. I'm also looking forward to seeing whether we can weather the storm yes. in more senses than one. Yeah.